his uh, report about the college football playoffs being expanded and it's real and it could be spectacular uh, <laughs> certainly got my attention and I didn't even know that when he'd be calling into the show that NCAA president Mark Emmert would be turning the Senate Commerce Committee into a two drink minimum laugh fest who knew that <laughs> Pete Thamel of Yahoo Sports joining us once again here on the Rich Eisen Show how are you Pete I'm good. Uh, the call to go on your show saved me from watching Ted Cruz uh, take uh, take issue with transgender. Then say stance on transgender. Is that really uh, what's athlete. happening? Right? Is that really what's that happening? That was that was actually he butted in and just diverted everything to the transgender issue. And my phone rang, and I was like, "This is a good time to hit mute because that is like classic political grandstanding." Because from, uh, from the top rope. So, um, yes, it has been a it has been a good nap inducing afternoon in the uh, Senate Commerce campus. So let's talk about this uh, college football playoff expansion idea and where it is going, because the number 12, um, by the way, speaking of which Tom Brady is speaking right now, and we'll get that sound for you, as they say in the business shortly, um, that uh, 12 is not the number that I would have seen coming. Pete, what's going on with this possibility here? So. The, the history of college football's postseason, Rich, is a series of uh, nonsensical compromises, right? It would be logical for this to go to eight in, in, the next, uh, in the next iteration. But you have to understand the compromises that got it to four. And where we are right now is an uneasy truce between the SEC, Notre Dame, and everybody else. Uh, in theory, going from four to eight – you go from four at-large bids to only either two or three at-large bids. And for those who have thrived off of at-large bids and have an advantage because of the at-large bid situation, don't want, in theory, less potential access. So, And the the notion of having eight at-large is not appealing to the Pac-12 especially, which is floundering, the Big 12, which is occasionally floundering, and the ACC, which is one Clemson misstep away from floundering. So... Uh, and obviously, the whole group of five wouldn't 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 buy for that. They want some sort of seat at the uh, at the table. So what has happened? And again, this all has not even been presented yet to be voted on. But mm-hmm. what has happened in the back channels and the conversations and the whispers on all sides of the industry is that twelve with six automatic bids, we assume, and then six at large bids becomes more palatable to everyone because it gives the access you want. It gives the, for the other leagues, it gives the increased access that the power leagues would want. Um, we can throw the big 10 in there. And the, the truce comes with more at large access for everybody. So it, it doesn't make sense on the surface, but when you drill down and you go through all the competing agendas, because nobody's sitting at the table, Rich saying, what's best for the game? <laughs> what's best for the sport? They're saying, how do we keep our slice of the cookie? And this is the way that everybody gets to still eat. Well, I mean, obviously this is about money because uh, we on this show, and I even go way back to my Sports Center days where I put out on a Sports Center 2 a.m. show, and I, re- I spent hours researching it and looking it up and, and putting a piece together for a 16-team playoff. And this is now 20 years ago where I went 16 mm-hmm. and I would use existing bowl games and their sites as the sites for, um, you know, quarterfinal games and, you know, top seeds would actually use their home stadiums to host to start off uh, a, a tournament. So I've been up pounding the table and it's got to be money trumping all of it because I don't hear the usual uh, old saws as to why something like this can happen, that it would A, ruin the bowl season, B, it would also – uh, destroy the win all or nothing attitude or sensibilities of every single week in college football. C, it would also remove the student athletes from the classroom. Like, when are they going to take their finals? I would even hear that. Like, you know, what, you know, uh, now, and now you're hearing, uh, you know, coaches say, well, we're playing 16, 17 games like a professional schedule. These guys are wiped out. There's no concern about that right now, is there? Well, there will be concern about that, Rich. I, 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 th- I do think that is probably the biggest obstacle to, to this steep of an expansion. Uh, health, health and safety, player health and safety. The, the counter to that is, say, let's just use the, or- the metaphorical Orange Bowl as an example. Well, yes. if you want a kid to play his 15, 16, 17th game in the Orange Bowl, can the Orange Bowl give a 
thousand dollar appearance fee for every player or do they have an autograph session and if it's some metaphorical Tua or Joe Burrow or some transcendent star did they get ten thousand dollars I mean is there some monetary incentive um, as Congress is discussing name image and likeness as we're on the air here is there some sort of monetary advantage that may make the risk more palatable I, I think that's going to inherently come up um, it will be interesting to see what the voice of the athlete is. Um, again, there's myriad reasons why this is going to happen. Money being primary, I'm certainly not naive to that. Right. Um, 12 is more money. Uh, it's 11 games. There are three postseason games right now. There are seven games within the postseason contract. What this does is you don't have the Cotton Bowl where Kyle Pitts and every receiver with a pulse on Florida bails out for health and safety. I'm not knocking them for bailing out, mind you. That's a very wise business decision. Um, You have a Cotton Bowl where Florida's playing a game that's a playoff game with some juice, and Kyle Pitts and company are probably going to play in it. So it's interesting to see how in just a decade the conversation has has, has evolved. I mean, they wouldn't even say the word playoff a decade ago. They had to call the proposal a plus one, Mm -hmm. and it got shot down. Mm -hmm. And now – um, there's a very good chance that uh, that an anchor get you know that the an anch- that they grow and grow exponentially here. Pete Thamel, Yahoo Sports reporter here on the Rich Eisen show. So uh, the idea for you know twelve or ten right would be uh, every major conference, if you will, gets an automatic bid. Thus, the conference championship games would not be uh, neutered. Right. So everybody would still have a conference championship game where the winner of that game gets an automatic bid and the regular season play would potentially get somebody an at large bid if a committee gets into a room and figures out who the what uh, if it's 10 teams or 12 teams, you could figure out who gets a buy. And then if it's 12, if it's 10, if it's 12, you just put them all in a hopper one versus 12 and go with what? Uh, what would be the split of at large versus automatic bids and things like that? So the the presumption now is that you go six automatic, six at large. And who gets the automatic? You get a buy. You go home site. Um, I guess it would be. I went to Syracuse, so I'm not good at math, Rich. Mm. Five plays, <laughs> 12, and then you just kind of d- divvy it up. Uh, five posts, 12, I guess you could right. say. And then you, uh, and then you divvy it up. Uh, you, you divvy it up that way. Okay. Who would get the automatic bids? Who just the? So it would be the Power Five, and then one from the the rest of the crew. Uh, the AAC certainly, performance wise, has has justified that they would probably be the leader in the clubhouse to get that every year. Um, it would be intriguing if it would be fun, quite frankly, and this is probably not based in reality. If the Cincinnati could play Boise instead of Cincinnati playing, you know, UCF or Tulane or whoever in the AAC title game. It, it, what one interesting byproduct of this that I don't think gets enough attention is that it also juices up all these leagues are about to go to market in the uh, in the next four or five years mm-hmm. and this makes the conference championships games more compelling because they're playing games now I mean there have been some uh, there have been some Pac-12 title games that have rated about as well as the C-SPAN hearings are rating um, because they didn't really have any meaning because they knew the Pac-12 wasn't going to have a champion in the playoff well if you've got an Oregon, season, Oregon team that's on a late run or a Utah team or a USC team or whoever, that game inherently is going to have more meaning because you are going to be an entrant into the playoff. It, it, certainly that the sanctity of the regular season we heard ad nauseum for decades was going, to be, um, was going to be the reason why we couldn't have a playoff. But in reality, when you go to this size, the, the regular season race still has a whole lot of meaning, and the conference title games – collectively have more meaning what are the odds pete thamel that we could actually utilize this to go you know uh back end of the season on down to the beginning of a season and deal with scheduling and the fact that you know there's a there's a a warm-up for the uh, iron bowl game that alabama plays you know or who's scheduled non-conference before a conference season begins where you get fewer conference games, maybe more uniform non-conference games amongst the power five. And then you could uh, maybe even reduce the number of games played before a playoff in a conference schedule and a non-conference schedule, a regular season schedule gets truncated in a way to, to, to 
actually get some uniformity here and some sanity and some understanding for fans to know what to expect out of everybody's schedule. What about that idea? Is that totally a total what, what fantasy? What fun would uniformity and sanity be? I mean, then it would be like not college athletics, right? You have to be completely not based in reality. Well, you know, in theory, the schedule is a problem. Yeah. And the schedule is going to have to be adjusted. Right. Uh, uniformity, certainly anyone with any common sense has, uh, you know, has, has said, well, we should probably get a little bit of, a little bit of uniformity. But there's another counter to that, too. It's like, well, the SEC plays eight, conference games, the Pac-12 plays nine. Well, you're going to get your bid from your league title games. So keep playing the way you uh, keep playing the way you want to play. I think the schedule, it would be smart to shorten the schedule in some way um, to allow for these games on the back end. Here's the problem. Money dictates all these decisions. Right. And then we'll hear a lot about health and safety student athletes. We'll hear a lot about a lot, but full stadiums and TV inventory dictate major decisions in college athletics always have always will rich and i just have a hard time seeing collectively college athletics say oh let's play 11 games because that's just slicing money out and we rarely see decisions that cost money we only see decisions that add money um to week zero our friend week zero which is sort of the flotsam and jetsam geographic outlier illinois versus uh who is it? Is the big week zero game, quote unquote, big week zero game this year? Oh, Illinois, Nebraska. That's probably the best week zero game on paper this year. Um, and then there's a half dozen other games. Hawaii usually plays in it, uh, et cetera. Maybe that now becomes more commonplace. Now we've had a couple marquee games there over the years. I want to say Florida played Miami last year, but maybe you you move things up a little bit. The NFL expanding its schedule doesn't help the calculus for college athletics because. Now you're running up against week 17, the wild card weekend. There's not that many games, so that helped. So, you know, the NFL always looms amid the scheduling decisions here because everyone knows where the, where the eyeballs are going to go. You, you know, college football is not going to compete with the NFL. It's just not a it's not a smart business choice. So, so, so I guess um, what, there's, yeah, there's a, there's there are a lot of complexities as you know the changing the fundamental dynamics of any multi billion dollar sporting entity. Sure, you know. Right. So time frame it for me, Pete, as I uh, as we uh, we put a button on this conversation. What's the time frame for something like this? So what we do know, well, do you want the time frame of how they're going to make the decision or when we'll actually see it in, in college? Athletics? How about both? I want to I want everything, oh. Pete. I want it all. So we should have a really good understanding of the model that will be debated. So they're going to come out of a series of two meetings of which I won't bore you with the jargon bill names of them yes. in the next couple of weeks. There will be a model that rises, and then that model is going to be debated for a few months. I would think by Thanksgiving we have a press release, but we're going to have a really good sense by the end of the month of is it 12, is it 8, 12 is the favorite right now in the clubhouse. And maybe maybe people vote status quo, but that would be voting for monetary status quo. Um, and then the thing we know most definitively, Rich, is that Bill Hancock has said we will not see changes – for the next two seasons. So the 21 season, the 22 season will look like it is looked like. Um, we're, I believe, seven years through a 12 year deal right now. And so the, the last couple of years of that deal is where we could end up seeing this, uh, seeing these potential wholesale changes. Well, I hope they do something. I, I really, I really do because, you know, yeah. this, um, I, I would have loved to have seen Cincinnati maybe get a shot last year, right? Oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm oh. serious. Like even Coastal Carolina getting in as the lowest seed, oh. they might have gotten spanked by Alabama. But at yeah. least, at least it's it's something that you know you, I, I'd like to see something like that. I really would like to see it and play it out and have my kids put brackets on the wall just like they do in March. I think it would be off the charts. I think people would love it. Love it. Couldn't people. agree more. Couldn't agree more. Access opportunity. Where the sports in a little bit of a rut at the high end, right? And that some of it is Nick Saban's brilliance and, you know, Dabo's hot streak here and, you know, what Urban and Ryan Day were able to do at Ohio State. Sorry, I had to bring that up, Rich. It's all good, Pete. But, um, good. you know, there, there, is, there is a little bit of just the blahs, and this would just inject a whole new energy into the postseason and I, I think generally be really good for the sport. I just hope they really keep the player, the athlete in mind. No, I, I agree, Pete, because, you know, I'd love to get some sort of variety here uh, as opposed to now with Nick Saban being signed through 2029, that there is a fourth grader strolling around the planet right now knowing that if he plays his cards right, he can be one of the teams in the final game 
uh, for Nick Saban's final year. Like, literally, that's just the way it goes. That's, uh, Nick I, I, is watching his Pee Wee film right now. Actually. True. I, I'm, I'm seriously, my, my son's 10. Like, if he plays his cards right by the time he's 19, who knows? Maybe he could be out yeah, there. Those, those those genetics are strong, too. I think he's got a good chance. Well, I, I just I, I don't know how many members of the tribe play for the Crimson Tide off the top of my head right now, but, you know, anything's possible. Why not him? He's a young Derrick Henry. That's <laughs> Thanks for the call, Pete. I appreciate it, as always. You Go, go back to your C-SPAN now. I'm sorry. You must go back. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. You got it. That's Pete Thamel, everybody, of Yahoo Sports. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.